And what's up, everybody? I'm back with another episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast, and I'm being joined tonight by the one and the only Hitmaster with a mother meme behind him. Uh, I know it's backwards. Wait, someone is wrong here. They are racing in the rain and turning right. I yes. couldn't find a Chicago meme. Crack house meme, so. And I'm not using copy from last week, so. Yes, folks, it is the post Chicago street course episode. The, the race that we have been shoved, that's been shoved down our throats for so long, finally happened. It happened, that's for sure. Uh, we're going to talk all about that. So I readjust, I'm just going to readjust my, my camera. There you go. Now you can see my, t- my my tan line because I'm wearing a Ty Dillon shirt that's way too big for me. Um, sure? Maybe we'll just keep it like that. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to recap the Chicago Street course for the Xfinity and the Cup. Um, I don't have a lot of news stuff. It was a pretty light week news-wise. Uh, with the fallout of the street course, so there wasn't a whole lot to talk about, but we do got two more game reviews today. I know I promised in the last episode that we would do, we are going to do NASCAR Thunder 2002, I am going to review that for sure, and I said I would review Dirt to Daytona, sadly, I I do not have the chance to play it yet, so that's going to be saved for the next episode. In its place, I am going to review NASCAR 06 instead. Oh. Instead of Dirt to Daytona. Um, so, going to do that instead. Um, and then at the end, we will preview trucks are at Mid Ohio and the Xfinity and Cup are in Atlanta this weekend. So, we will preview all of that. So. But first, let's talk about Chicago uh, and what a weekend it was. Um, so news broke. Uh, this was, I think, the night between the Cup and the Xfinity race that the news broke that a um, like supervisor, electric, like a supervisor, like noise, like sound setup guy working, like trying to set up sound stuff for the race. He ended up getting electrocuted to death at the, while setting up for the race. This happened during the weekend, or it happened like the day before, or during the weekend, and that's that's pretty sad, uh, honestly. Yeah. That I found about that, but uh, so prayers out to to his family because that that was uh, not great. But <laughs> another funny fan. Uh, this okay. That first one wasn't funny. This one was pretty funny. Uh, so some guy got his Corvette and uh, was able to sneak onto the course and d- do some uh, joyriding on the course. Uh, and he ended up getting apprehended by, by the police, but, uh, yeah, they kept that pretty under the radar as well, so, uh, I don't know how it happened, but, uh, they were able to do it. That's a couple of funny things that, uh, pointed out to me that were, uh, that did, so, um, but anyway, other than, so let's get to the actual race now, um, something that we, guess we did not forecast was... A torrential downpour, a freaking monsoon hit Chicago over the weekend, um, and it, it it really did force NASCAR's hand um, as to what to do for for the race. For the Xfinity race, I got to watch a decent amount about of what actually transpired. Um, at lap 25, they decided to red flag the race because. Um, there was lightning in the area per protocol, um, and it was a 55-lap race, So, and it wasn't the end of the second stage. It was a 55-lap total race, so it wasn't halfway or the second stage. But after a lengthy delay, NASCAR decided to call the race, and you know that's pretty, that goes against the rules because, again, the race has to either be halfway done or has to be the end of the second stage they were at neither of those and decided to call the race um handing the win to cole custer uh who was able to start it on the pole dominated much of the uh, much of the part that they actually did run 
um, and was able to get the uh, victory in the first race of first race of the weekend. I don't know if you got to watch any of that at all, Game Master, but um, apparently you didn't. That's all right. Um, but all right, you know I I watched only at the end of the race. So, wasn't. Otherwise, it was you know, not great. Give me one second. Uh, I need to see what's happening. Something's happening. Okay. I'll keep talking. Um. But anyway, then the cup race, uh, which I actually got to watch more of than the Xfinity race. Um, it was you know not great, but uh, more rain. Plagued it. They were able to actually start it on time, though, uh, and uh, for for the cup race at least, it was. Um, and they were they had to rain delay the race, but they were able to get it started in the rain, um, and then they pull off another, and I and then they decide midway through the race, there's more rain coming plus uh, darkness, and they decide to, you know. So, I mean, putting in lights. Is that not a thing you can do here? There were street lights all over the track, but no. They have to cut a whole quarter of the race length off from 100 laps, the original distance, to now 75 laps. That played a huge role in pitch strategy. Christopher Bell was dominating this race got screwed he won the first two stages gets screwed by the um uh ruling uh ends up having a mediocre finish denny hamlin the pole sitter um spun out on the second lap of the race never really recovered from that tyler reddick had a good start going and um but he had some trouble ended up finishing a lap down um really most drivers did finish the the race uh, only a few didn't uh, only like a couple of them didn't um, but the rain, plus the you know being the first race and, and in this new strategy, kind of kind of made it a kind of a shit show race to be honest with you, um, uh, including one incident uh, midway through the race when uh, Kevin Harvick and Corey LaJoy got into a tangle, um, trying to help avoid there's this another spin in, in the turn, and it caused a major log jam in the turn. Uh, because everybody was blocked in and they weren't able to uh, really move around or, or get around the crash and end up causing a caution and uh, that was that was pretty crazy but such as as it may be that was uh, it was pretty funny to watch to be honest but uh, I mean just kind of the, the shows of the, the tight corners and stuff that, that are going on um and then uh, the turn that really got many drivers was was turn six. Uh, main main driver that it really affected was a uh, who 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 was that that I can't really I can't think of it I can't think of it now. Uh, uh, Noah Gragson, I think it was Noah Gragson, uh, really got affected by that turn uh, because he was getting plummeted, crashed into no. It was, um, Really got hit in the wall a bunch of times. Really, um, kept crashing into the wall. Uh, I kind of felt bad for him, but it, it bit a lot of other drivers, um, left and right. Um, it was it was pretty dangerous for many. It's not a fast turn or anything like that, but it's just you know, uh, so tight quarters and you know, the wetness of the the, the the course really didn't um, do anybody any favors there. Um, but alas, uh, we actually ended up seeing because of the uh, the race length being cut off, we saw a lot of drivers who hadn't really been out front all day uh, get shoved into the front and in contention for the win. Mainly, um, we saw a pretty good run out of um, out of Justin Haley, um, who was running seemingly running away with the race, but somebody else creeped up, and it was the Project 91 car Shane. I'm gonna butcher his name, Shane Van Gisbergen. Shane Van Gisbergen out of Australia goes ahead 
and takes the W um, in spectac in really dominant fashion. He took those. He took Chase Elliott, Austin Dillon, and uh, Justin Haley to school on those final few laps of the race and was able to uh, get the win despite the race going to overtime and uh, overtime. It, it still was like 20, 22 laps at behind the scheduled distance of the race, but. Um, I guess you can call it overtime in any way, um, but it was a. But honestly, I, that was that was a pretty cool win. It was his cup debut, and he gets a win. It's the first time in like sixty years that that's been done. Forty, fifty, sixty years that that has been done in NASCAR. He, absolutely historic, and he did it in dominating fashion. It wasn't like he um, was like in the back all day and then took a uh, tire strategy and went up to the front. He um, he was running in the top five, top ten most of the day, um, contending for the lead. Uh, kind of got shuffled back before the the change and started really to rally his way to the front. Otherwise, um, but a lot of the other contenders that were kind of being able to outrun him were now stuck in the back. So he was able to make a run at it, and uh, it turned out to be a very popular win. And I'm surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a very very popular uh, a win to see a guy you know. It's for track house, you know, to, to get the win. He did it in great fashion, so um, that was really, really good. Uh, uh, a good, a good cherry on top of what I thought it was the shit show Sunday, um, in my opinion. It was not uh, not NASCAR's finest showing, but how much really, really, you know, was was their fault, and that's kind of what we have to to assess here is. Um, because you get the race and, you know, how, because the rain, the amount of rain that they got really um, makes it hard to fully assess how good the weekend really was. And hard to assess if it was a success, in, in my opinion. Um, because we did see, near the end of the cup race, we did see some elements of, I think, what I think the race would have been had it been not raining. And that's, you know, some, um, lots of stuff of, um, I can't even think of the word now, uh, um, crossovers, a lot of, um, side-by-side uh, -side racing, a lot of passing in the corners, um, I think we would have seen a lot of that. We did see it near the end, like I said, um, but the rain kind of killed it, in, in, in my opinion, so, I don't know what you got for a take on that one. Uh, the master, I don't know if you say, was it a success or wasn't? Say it one more time, I'm sorry. I'm trying to answer the question. What's your All thoughts right. on the cup race? What, what? I think it was good. Uh, I really wanted Chase Elliott to win. Um, I mean, he was there. He was there to try and win. He only had the pass think Justin Haley and then he had to pass Shane but um or how they say it SVG that's so for short I'm gonna rant about NBC after we talk about like the success of the race because I gotta I gotta do it Sorry. um but it wasn't that bad honestly I was watching the race before and I'm like oh great Denny Hamlin starting out in the front and then when I saw Hamlin hit the wall not only was I cheering, but my my grandpa was cheering, my grandma was cheering, everyone in my house was cheering. So I was happy. Everyone hates Denny Hamlin in my family. So <laughs> um, it's one of those things when we see uh, him hit the wall or anything, it's just we're good. So Atlanta, I hope he wrecks again. But who knows? Um, but I mean, my opinion, I called it. I knew there was going to be wrecks that they were just going to slide into that, into a barrier or into a wall, a tire wall, and then wreck. But they didn't fully wreck, but they wrecked. So I called it. <laughs> I didn't know how they were going to do it, but I called it. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there were a lot of, like, spins and crashes, but I think the only driver who didn't finish the race was Alex Bowman, and that's because he blew a motor. Um, so I don't think 
So, the yeah, entire. Well, see, half those wrecks, half those wrecks, like in the tire thing, like when Kyle Busch hit that wall or hit that tire thing, I thought it was going to damage his car. It only damaged like that much. Yeah, they and I was were... just outside, and I was just surprised. Yeah, they absorbed a lot of the energy, which was 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 good. Also, they weren't going that fast, really. It's not really yeah. a lot. There's not really a lot of high speed areas on that course, from what I could see. I don't know if it's because of the rain or just because they couldn't go that fast or whatnot, but it didn't seem like they were taking that strong of a of an acceleration approach. But well, what do you, what do you think? Was it a success or was it not? Scale of one to ten, I'm gonna have to give it a, about a six. You know, it was okay. I mean. For the first ever race, of course, you're going to get those kind of races that, you know, aren't going to be good at some points, but then are going to be super good. Like the ending. I loved how he won that. You know, a guy that's in supercars that knows what he's doing. This is the first time on the Chicago street course. And he wins. I mean, I agree. beautiful. I'm okay with it. Oh, I'm very okay with it. That was a great win. rather had Chase Elliott won, but... You know, second choice. <laughs> I mean, Trace Elliott got a top five. We can't really. I mean, he was in right. the back all day, and he got the top five. So you can't really, you can't really complain. Um, but in my opinion, like I said, I think the, I think it deserves a second chance. Let's say that. Um, oh yeah. It the rain plagued it. If it's a dry race, I think it would have been a lot better quality of racing. And I still think Shane Shane would have gotten the win. Um, because he was just driving that good, but I think we definitely would have seen a lot more action about some of the other drivers and would have. This may be a far distance, but maybe do a Chicago, the Chicago Street Course on the fourth, like on the fourth of July weekend, but do it as the All Star Race. Then a lot of people will come. To Chicago. Well, I, think they, I think they got a good turnout. Like I don't think fans. I mean, for the inaugural race, yeah, they did. I mean, yeah, it was raining, but still, it was the inaugural right. thing. There's not going to be a lot of people. So, um, I think overall, it was. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. Again, it's hard to say because of the rain. But I like the winner, right. and that was good. It was a really good winner, and um, we saw some good elements of racing. So. Um, it's up in the air still. Obviously, it's only been a few days since the race. Whether they're going to go back to Chicago and do this again, are they going to go somewhere else to race again, uh, to do this again, like another city to do a street race? Are they going to um, axe street racing entirely? Um, personally, I think it would be cool if they went somewhere else to do it to help give that city representation now indycar goes to birmingham all the time but i don't know the proximity that adds to daladega um, this may be a far distance but i mean since they did chicago maybe do detroit i detroit don't want, has a street course. i don't want them to do detroit and here's why i don't want them to do detroit if they do detroit they're going to ax mis mis will be removed from the schedule entirely and probably will never come back well no they could have this could be technically the two michigan races if you think about it, I don't. I don't think they would do two Michigan races again. I think they're okay with just doing the one um, because it draws better fans to that race and it opens up a chance for them to go to a different track. Um, and I, I mean, it, just as a concept that they did keep by my ass, I think still going to downtown Detroit would be cool. I mean, IndyCar did it; that it was pretty well received. Um, but like I said, I think they would act on my ass, and I don't. I, I don't think that would. I don't want that to happen. Um, like, MIS is one of the fastest tracks on the NASCAR schedule that isn't restricted plate, may I say? Because right. now that Atlanta is a restricted plate track, technically Michigan has the top spot. So I don't want to go. Uh, I, I I don't know. They really have to venture out if they wanted to go somewhere else. I mean, they could go to. Like I said, Birmingham, Alabama does the... I know it's not Birmingham, it's St. Petersburg, uh, Florida, that does the IndyCar races there on the streets. They could do that, but is that really, like, the closest proximity to, like, you know, Talladega? Or, not no Talladega, Talladega is more north, but they... they I would say do the Tennessee and Virginia. Because you know how there's that street? I mean, not the actual street, but there's a street 
that you can go from Virginia and Tennessee if you just step over the line. Maybe they could find a street that's technically like that. And at one point you could say NASCAR went to both Tennessee and Virginia at the same time. Or like whichever line they choose. Like let's say Kyle Busch chooses the outside line, Tennessee. He's in Tennessee. On the outside, let's say William Byron. On the other side, Virginia. <laughs> and it's on, and it's near Bristol, so. It's a cool concept. Um, Take yeah. away Bristol dirt. I don't think anybody would be complaining if they took away Bristol dirt, but. I would be because I'm. I kind of like Bristol dirt. I loved well, going there. The fan, ex- you have a fan experience under your belt. That's probably why, but. Um, I have the rock. Anyway, um. Yep. What was I gonna say? Um. Well, I, I did forget to mention, ratings-wise, it was a complete success. It was NBC's yeah. highest-rated NASCAR race in six years. That's really, really, really good um, for this race. And a lot of people were not happy that it was even coming to the schedule, and it still did um, that, that, that well. So that was really, really good on that part. But let's, speaking of NBC, let's go on a little tyrant here. Um, me style. I said, I don't know if I said this last week on the podcast or I'm talk, when we were talking in the Discord, I, I don't remember, but um, I, I talked about how Fox was so bad, and I think the main reason why they were bad was Clint Boyer. And NBC cannot get worse because they don't have Clint Boyer. Wow, they really tested that saying this weekend. Um, they were hard to watch. It was... It kind of goes back to, you know, when they were in Nashville and they were talking about the street course, the entire Nashville race. But, like, they just wouldn't. Uh, during the rain delay, I mean, I, if I had a nickel for every time that they talked about the... If they, like, described the course, like, the course layout and, like, what the turns were and where they were going, I would probably have enough money to buy a house because they were talking about it every two seconds we get it we know the court we we can tell what the course is you don't need to show it every two seconds and then jeff burton got the name wrong of of, um something i don't know what that was all you know what it was jeff burton says and here comes the defending champion chase elliott like guys He's not. He's he's not the defending champion. You got You got to go to number twenty-three. Like, what are you doing? And then, eh, I, just, I, don't I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, oh my god, dude. He's having a bit of a. He's been, He's having a bit of a. You know. Um, I'm. I'm too tired. I'm too tired to do my normal normal dances and, and whatnot. But I mean. And it's like, you're really that bad. Like, like the race was good, and but you, you have to be shoving the shit down our throats. I mean, it's like, they, and they have to, of course, shout out the sponsor of a turn. Turn six was sponsored by Xfinity. Why are you sponsoring a turn? Like, uh. McDonald's sponsored a turn, too. Oh, God. Good. Jesus Christ. Christ. And that's what I think I was saying last week, too. NBC doesn't care how the fans think of it. If they make enough sponsorship revenue and TV dollars, they're going to come back. They don't care. And it's just like... That's what, that's what, that's what NASCAR thinks. And just, they are... I just hope that with the street course over, they actually focus on the rest of the season now. Because that's been the entire talk of the season, has been the street course. And now it's over. Winner has been crowned. Let's talk about the other half of the season that we still have left to go. You know, it's just like, seriously, people. Come on. Um, but That's my little tyrant tirade on NBC. Anyway, Shane Van, Shane Van Gisbergen, I forgot to... Um, he wins the race. In the 91 project, and a lot of people are like, oh, he doesn't get into the playoffs? So why doesn't he get into the playoffs? I thought you get weighted in your end, he's in the playoffs. Because it's the only race he's running all season. Of course he's not going to... 
I was going to say, they have said, I looked on Reddit, and this is by Bob Pachris. Um, he said that next year he wants to try and do a full season. So. There were some rumors going around that he might sign a track house contract for 2025. but Which would be cool. That would, you know. that would be cool to see him do it. Um, I think because of the more road courses that they do, I think a lot of these drivers that are only running like the, the, the – like are trying their hand at it this year because a lot of them are. Um, I think they'll be more inclined to possibly run a full season because they have more chances to win and get in the playoffs and get a better points finish and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that would be good. But anyways, Shane, you won and you're in to my New Year's Eve spectacular bracket. You're the 14th driver to lock yourself in on wins, uh, 18th overall. So we're doing really good on amount of drivers again this season. Um, so he locks himself in in the track house 91 car. So if anybody else wins in the 91 project car, cause I don't, I don't know how many more races that's running this season, but if somebody, I, I really doubt anybody else is going to win, but, uh, if they do, we have a debate on our hands. Uh, you'll have to do a one-on-one -on -one versus, versus the two people that won in the 91. I'll figure it out. Not a big deal. Anyway. So that's everything we want to talk about the street course. It's uh, it happened, and uh, but we can now just like hopefully NBC will do, we can move on. Real quick, I love how Legacy Motorsports did the uh, um, tribute to Jimmy Johnson um, by putting his uh, basically the JJ on the side of the driver's side door for Ty Dillon and. Noah Gregg. Eric Jones. Playing Eric Jones. Yeah. I forgot. It was on the side of the car. Um, and the crew chief had the 84 on the back of his hat. So. That's cool. Pretty good. Anyway. As he takes a sip of his water. <laughs> Thirsty. Shut up. Um, again, we didn't have much uh, news wise. Uh, a couple things, though. Cole Custer, uh, post Chicago Street Course Xfinity win, is coming back to the Cup Series. He's going to run three races this season in the Rick Ware 51 car. Uh, the first of those is this weekend at Atlanta. So, um, will it be anywhere near competitiveness when he was running with Stuart Haas? Probably not, but one can dream, right? Um, uh, another driver announces for a race. Dale Jr. is coming back, and he is going to run the Xfinity race. He's running. It was already announced that he's running Bristol in September for the Xfinity race there, and he's also running the October Homestead race, um, both in the 88 car for his own Xfinity team. So that was formally announced today. So. That's pretty cool. Still nice to see him getting active every now and then with, with, with the racing um, and stuff like that. And then this was it. This is the last thing. The damage clock. So you guys know the clock for the damage and, and when you do racing um, that they did. Starting like, I don't remember, it was a few years ago that they did it. Uh, but that's being extended by one minute for Atlanta. Uh, so instead of six minutes in the Xfinity series, it's now seven. And instead of seven in Cup, it's now going to be eight minutes for the weekend. Is um, probably because of the you know the the big crashes that can happen there now. Um, to make sure that you have adequate time to get the car fixed and whatnot. So nice little touch that they're they're doing there for that. But but again, that was. That was everything. Not a lot of news. I don't know if you had any um, news yourself, hey Master, about anything I might have not seen. But uh, I'm trying to find. Oh no, not that. I'm trying to find um, some Corgan Oil Speedway things. Um... Oh. Would you look at that? So they got new parking things at Corgan Oil. Um, 
you may know this. Um, other people don't know this. If you guys watch this, um, we have a home track called Corrigano Speedway. No, it is not run by us someday. If it gets run by me and all the Pringleson and Company crew, we're calling it Pringleson and Company Speedway. I'm making the bet on that. <laughs> um, sponsored by Kellogg's. Yes. <laughs> Big branding all um, across the Speedway. And technically, Pringleson, Pringle, not Pringleson, Pringles cannot copyright us because technically we're doing Pringleson and Company. No. Pringles. Correct. So correct. Screw you, Tony the Tiger. Okay, anyway, say what you want to say. All right. Um, but we have new event parking, which I know you can't see it, but I'll send a picture to you on uh, Discord here in a little bit. Um, they have, you know, that house that's on the far side of the of the light where you go, like on the corner, down Cedar there. Street. Yeah, you go down. Yeah. Well, that area, that huge area, is just, um, is just going to be parking. So I know That's this. We good. shouldn't be talking about parking stuff, but this is actually really cool. Um, I sent it to you so that you can see it too. Um, but it's weird how they put handicap parking in there too so this is all basically going to be oh so it's i'm not going to show this just for doxing reasons but um, right wow they really are expanding it because you know they have to have a lot of space in the on the track for like the haulers and stuff. if you guys want to see what it looks like and everything if you go on facebook to corrigan oil speedway yeah, or, sorry. Yeah, go to Facebook and type in Corrigan Oil Speedway, and you'll see their latest posts. You'll get to see everything. But hmm. they also have a new um, in thing where, you know, you can see everything and all that. Um, and I noticed that the restrooms, like I said a long time ago, are going to be fixed um, and everything. So that would be cool. Okay, so you are allowed to stand, and you are allowed to watch the race where we did when we went last time in third three. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring your own we chairs. I At first, I was just like, uh, "Are we able to do?" No, you were like, "Are we able to do this?" I'm like, "I do it all the time." Well, because nobody was over there, and they were all just like, "What are you doing over there? What are you doing over there? You're not supposed to be over there." I'm like, "I don't know what I'm doing." Um. So the next race they have is August fourth, and it's called the Wild Chill, Ch the Wild. It's called the Wild Trial. Sorry, my bad. Um, and this holds a special meaning to the Henning and Herning family. They passed away a couple week a couple weeks ago, so they decided, you know what, we're going to do something good for them. Um. So yeah, Friday, August fourth, they will host that. Um, so, and then August twentieth, they have a thing called Harvest Thirty Four. So I don't know what that is. We might have to go to that one on the fourth. I uh, that sounds pretty interesting. Well, that's also close to MIS. That is, it's the Friday before MIS. Yeah. Um, so I guess the Harvest 34 is Pro Late Models and Street Stocks, which I love the most, uh, Front Wheel Drive and Pony Stocks. So, you know, it will be cool. Should but be. either than that, we, there's nothing else that I could see. Yeah, so that'd be interesting. We should definitely try and go to that for 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 for, for sure. Anyway, anyways, I was stuttering there. Anyway, game review time. Like I said, no dark today. Time to review. I promise. I promise when I get home from the we're uh, so. The reason why I can't play it uh, is because I've been so busy preparing. We went up north and uh, went to Michigan's Adventure the other day. Uh, and I, um, 
getting ready to go on a uh, 10 day long vacation starting well I'll actually already be on the road by the time this video goes out but so when I get home from that I promise I will play Dirt Daytona and we'll make it on the next episode so I promise but so I'm gonna do NASCAR 06 I've already played it so do that but we're gonna do NASCAR Thunder 2002 first this is the first of the PS2 games that I uh, picked up um, I could have gotten Thunder. I could have gotten no one for the PS2. I, I've seen it, but I just got it for the PS1 because I found it first. So um, huh. but anyway, um, so let's get to my notes. So first off, this game is a massive manual. Actually, I'm gonna go find it real quick. I'm gonna show you this manual. Let's see. There's actually one thing that I wanted to say for the truck series. Um, there is a driver that I think some people might figure out. So at Mid Ohio, if you know who Mario Andretti is, um, yes, I know who Mario Andretti is. Of course, everyone knows who Marco or Mario Andretti is. But, I'm assuming, if I'm not mistaken, his grandson, Marco, he will be driving in the truck series this week. Oh, nice. And he will be driving the tw number seven car for, I th think... But it looks, it looks like, um, looks like the 7 for, uh, what is it called? Spire Motorsports? But I don't know. Probably. Spire. I think, I think, there we I go. Think, think, yeah, he's going to be for Spire. I think that's what it's going to be, yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, because they sponsor Hendrick Cars. So that's why I was kind of confused. And also Kyle Larson and William Byron. But, yeah. That would be cool. All Just right. to see. Um, anyway. So, anyway, look at this manual. This game. Let me get it out. Give me a second. This thing's freaking massive. Look, look at how big the freaking manual is. It's just thick, too. Look at all these pages. It's just random stuff. Uh, by the way, an ad for... Um, NCAA football 2002 on the back of the manual. That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> it's no more now. Look at this. Just all this random crap. Like, oh my god. Uh, also, I, I find it funny. I just realized this, but I find it... Well, there goes my phone. Uh, I just realized Jeff Gordon's on, on the cover of the game, and he's on the cover of the manual, obviously. But then you open it up, and the disc, and it, Bobby Labonte's on the disc. Why... <laughs> Why, why is Bobby Labonte on the disc? That makes zero sense. Uh, well, then again, did Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon have a like a battle for the championship that year? O two, not O two. Stort Hold won. On. A, Stort won in an O two. Well, I guess it would have been two thousand one because this game came out two thousand one. So, but Labonte wasn't really a championship contender then either. It was like Ricky Rudd let me, and let Jeff me, Gordon. Let me figure this out. Oh. Anyway, um, other than the ma and then so this is obviously came out in two thousand one. It's the first. It was the first NASCAR game released after the death of Dale Earnhardt. Um, so I didn't even think about it, but they did put in a nice um, tribute to Dale Earnhardt at the beginning of the game. You boot it up, and it gets like you, you see the three pop up, and then the whole. As you know, this game, it's got another really cool intro to the game, long intro with music, um, but they make it Dale Earnhardt-esque because they're, you sh they show in-game graphics of the cars racing at Talladega with Sweet Home Alabama playing in the background. Um, so I think that's a really nice tribute there for um, Dale Earnhardt. So, uh, so I liked it. Also, a very cool menu screen. Um, a lot of the... Uh, 
the Thunder games, in my opinion, do have some pretty cool menus, but uh, this one, this one's no exception. This game does also have, like, a lack of modes. They have, they don't even have, like, challenges. I mean, you do a quick race, and you can do a couple other things, but compared to Thunder 2003 and Thunder 2004, and even compared to, like, 01 and Heat, like, there's nothing here. Um, and it just kind of sucks, because this game seems like it would be so much more packed in between some other really good stuff and with a lot more content. And it's good. What there is is good in this game. And I just wish there was more. And I don't know why they they put it in. Maybe it's because they were switching over to the, this is the first Thunder game. So maybe they were moving over to some other cool other stuff. I don't really know. But I don't know. I just wish, it would have been nice to see more. But what we do get uh, the driver selection. 35 drivers plus Richard Petty. Uh, and you get your own custom, and you can do custom cars. That's really, really good in my opinion. Um, there's lots of different paint schemes to unlock, um, a lot of things to see, uh, and a lot of different paint schemes you can race as uh, in the game. So that's really, really, really cool. Um, I'm watching also, the gameplay while you're talking, by the way, and I'm still listening. Anyways, twenty and then uh, twenty three tracks as well. That's really really good. But no fantasy tracks, which is something you know. It's, I I don't get it. Like some games that have it, and then some games don't, and then some do, and some don't. It's weird, but not in this game. Um. Also, I there's a cool announcer commentary that's uh, unique to each track before you race. Um, I know some other ones have that, like the uh, 2005 Chase for the Cup, I know has it. I think 2000, oh, uh, oh, oh, we'll get to 06 later, I think 06 also has it. Um, but they're not, it's not like this one, this one's very um, in-depth and, and, and cool to get people hooked onto the, the track and, and whatnot, so uh, I like that. I like the driver bios and the stats of, of, of the tracks and everything, I think those are really, really cool. It's another piece of cool statistical information to give to the player. They may just be a little more casual of a fan, or not really a fan, but wanting to get involved. It's a good way to get them involved, and a good way to uh, get everything uh, going yeah. there. The starting lineup thing is really, really cool. As always, I, I like when they read off the starting lineups for the races. Um, it's cool. Um, I think the track and car renderings are really good. This is a testament to all the Thunder games, 03, 02, 03, 04, 05. I think they're all really, really good. This one is no exception to that rule, um, as, as, as I say. One thing I realize, though, you don't want to turn off the stability on your car. Um, so when you start and you do a race, you have auto brake and you have a thing called stability. And I was like, why is this here? So I like the auto brake wasn't was like kind of slowing me down where I wasn't really able to catch the guy in front of me. So I turned that off, and I also turned off stability. And I probably also made the mistake of racing at Bristol uh, when I did the stability turned off. You don't want to turn off stability uh, unless unless you're just looking for a wild time because uh, when you turn off the stability, like when you're you know in your car with the stability on, you know you have pretty good grip and you're able to to um you know drive pretty easily you know without it whoa you are it's a whole different experience you are sliding everywhere you're crashing into the wall you're spinning out at random points uh you just have absolutely no grip nothing to keep you uh going in the right direction at all and it can it can make for a really good challenge especially at a track like bristol um, when it's your first time ever playing the game, uh, it can, uh, be pretty, uh, pretty impressive. I was trying to win the race, um, I was, I was leading most of it, but I could not, um, keep up, especially with some, I had, ca I had cautions on and there were some late yellows that, uh, kind of screwed me over and I ended up finishing third, which, um, you know, could have been a lot worse, but I, I was also really, really close to the win and that kind of disappointed me, but... But yeah, you don't want that. You don't. No, 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 no. Keep that stability on, people. It will save you a life. Um, 
this game, this game does also introduce the auto repair. I think this was pro this was the first game that I've that, like the oldest NASCAR game that I played that has it's not the first but the oldest. Um, but yeah, your car has to be like destroyed. Like there has to be flames coming out of the front of your car before it lets you auto repair, which is you know I guess they evolved it and upgraded it in later games. I guess not, not. I guess they did. They did, um, but it would have been I don't know. It's just a little bit nicer to see that not have to let your car explode before you go start before you can repair it. That would have been nice. Um, the last piece, the spotter and the crew chief are really annoying. They continuously, if you, if you get so close as get to the wall, like get really close to it, but don't touch it, but just get really close. They scream at you. They're always screaming at you if a car is coming up in front of you or whatnot. And touching every little single thing. I wish there was a way to disable them. There probably is. I don't know how. Um, but they're they just they're 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 annoying in most games, but this one uh, not. But this one's you know a little bit more than than others in my opinion. So but that was it for my notes on Thunder Two Thousand Two. Overall, I think it's a fun game. There's just a like a there, in my opinion, there's just not a lot of stuff to do in it. Um, that kind of takes away from the replay value, and if you you go do it every now and then to play around with it, but I don't know. That's like it lacks like lightning challenges or like thunder challenges or anything to really keep you playing. Um, instead of when just doing like a quick race whenever um, you want to play like friends or something like that. But uh, question. Yeah, I'm watching the actual thing. Why was there? Why are there two number one cars? There are? Fuck, I don't remember that. There's Steve Park, of course, for Earnhardt Racing. And then there's, for some reason, uh, James know. Finch. James Finch? He's a car owner. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a legacy car. Hmm. That's probably what it is. All I know is I see two ones, so that's why I was just confused. Hmm. Maybe that's something I didn't see that when I was playing my game, so I wonder if that's something you have to unlock. Um, but yeah, otherwise that's that's pretty much my thoughts on it. There's just zero one. What the fuck? If if you if you find it for a good price, pick it up. I think it's worth at least giving you a shot. But um, as far as how much gameplay you get out of it, you can get. I mean, you can be creative and do some pretty good stuff with it, but. Um, don't hold your hopes, you know. So, anyway, again, that's it for Thunder 2002. Um, now, let's move on to the gem of this, uh, to this, uh, this batch of games that I have bought so far. I still have yet to play, I still have yet to play that Dirt to Daytona, at least, obviously, but the bread and the butter of this beautiful beautiful plate of games nascar 06 i had pretty low expectations coming into this game but man did it blow me away um so this one it's officially called nascar 06 total team control and that's because this game's big gimmick is um being able to control every driver in a team um, and I'll get to that a little bit later, but that's like the reason why it's called, you know, total team control. You control the total team. There's a whole thing when you like, there's an opening cutscene in the game when you do like the career mode and, um, and like the car, not, well, not actually on no, the career mode. When you start the game, you, um, like you get the cutscene of the DEI cars racing the Hendrick cars at Daytona and, um, Jimmy Johnson crashes, so you have to, and you're racing as Jimmy Johnson, and then you crash, and then you're supposed to take control of Jeff Gordon and go and uh, win the race. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, opening cutscene of the game. Um, I also did like that they used audio from actual like people in the game. I think that was really really well done, um, mostly in the, in, the, in the in the prologue, but need to do with some of the other points in the game too. Um, as far as a lot of the stuff of this game, they take a lot of stuff from uh, Thunder 2005 Chase for the Cup. 
the audio clips are the same when you do like the chase. There's a whole chase for the cup mode. They still they brought that back. Um, they also you know they same with stuff that's in there. Um, you got the same fight to the top mode. They brought that back. Um, so it's basically a lot of the same stuff from that game. Um, just a little more watered down because that's not the main point of the game. But it's still there. You can still do it. Um, I like doing the chase mode. I like to doing the quick race stuff. Um, I didn't really get into the fight to the top stuff at all. But, um, you know, what does it be? Um, you can race in four different series, though, which is awesome. You can race in the Modifieds, you can race in the Truck, you can race in the Xfinity, and you can race in the Cup Series, which is really, really, really good. You can do that in 05 as well, but uh, I like that they continued that from 06. Um, as far as the Cup, this is really where it gets good, okay? 41, first, first of all, 41 drivers. That's really, really good. 41 drivers is good. It's even more than Thunder 2004. Um, lots of different paint schemes. You have to unlock them. But, you know, they brought that back with like, the Thunder plates. got to buy with skill points. They brought all that from 05 as well. Um, some drivers don't really have any uh, that many. Like, Jeff Gordon, I think, has one or two paint schemes. But, like, um, like some have, like, three. Like, Bobby Labonte has a bunch. Um... And, like, Mark Martin has a bunch, too, for, like, no reason. I see Dale Jarrett has just a UPS truck. I was about to say that. You could race as the truck. <laughs> you could race the truck. This is why this game is so incredible, okay? So you guys don't know about the race, the race the truck campaign that UPS did with Dale Jarrett back in, like, the mid-2000s when he was sponsored by UPS running with Yates. Like, thank you. The big thing was... <laughs> Race the truck. People love the truck. And nobody took advantage of that. They never did. As far as I know, they didn't do anything about that in, like, an actual NASCAR race. They didn't, like, run the truck around the track for a few laps or nothing. They didn't do it in, like, any movie promotions. They didn't do anything. Not even, like, in the commercials. They would tease it, but it wouldn't happen. So what did EA do? They came out, and they put the truck in the game. And they it, it looks like a real truck. It really does. It's insane how crazy and here's the thing about the truck okay it's the most expensive thunder play in the game 75,000 skill points it doesn't seem maybe like a lot to people but it's it's quite a bit uh, but you, you could do it pretty you could get there pretty quickly if you save up your points but this is by far the best vehicle in the game okay it has great handling it has great grip um it's super durable it's, it, it can be a little unstable, though. Uh, don't push its boundaries a lot, not a lot, because it will uh, it'll get quite crazy um, at the end. I tried to win it, so... Point being, I tried to win a championship with the truck in the chase for the cup mode. And, well, first I tried to do it for Dale Jr. I ended up winning the championship as Dale Jr., but my game data didn't save, because my memory card was full, so I had to go back and... Empty my memory card out a little bit. Rip a bunch of... At least you won the championship for Dale. And so then I was like, alright, screw this. I'm going to win a championship with the truck. Bad idea. Um, <laughs> where are you? Because what the... Because like the proportions for the truck are weird. Because you can't really... There's not a lot of angles that you can really drive the truck as. Because it's so big big it can engulf other cars um it, it make it makes its own noises too which is really really good but if you like hit the wall with this thing like it's not really like you're just gonna bounce off the wall because in like oh six you you get if you hit the wall you get stuck to the wall for the entire turn like it, it's unforgiving as all hell so when you are, are racing the truck you get stuck to the wall, but, like, because they tried to program the truck to be, like, a larger, heavier, not as, like, a, like as a car, it's project something else. Every time it hits the wall, the truck goes ape shit and just starts tumbling and flying all over the place. The game, like, glitches out. So, you really have to be careful with how you do that, but... 
Um, but I, regard, I, so I had to I, I had to give up after Atlanta, which is like the seventh race in the chase in in this game. I had to give up. It was just becoming too too much, uh, too annoying for me to try and actually win the championship with the truck. Maybe I'll go back and do it for a video or something because that's a pretty good idea actually. But alas, I I had to call it. But um, we'll go back to some other stuff about the driving controls a little bit. Uh, 32 tracks though, uh, total. That's really, really good as well. 14 of them are fantasy tracks. So a really, really large variety, which is awesome. Uh, I really, really like that. Um, during the loading screens in the game, you get like cool fun facts as well. Um, like that's really cool too. Like, you know, loading screens are not always like, you know, fun to sit through, but in this game they are because you get fun facts about stuff to, to keep your time going. Um, so let's talk about the total team control piece. The So, basically what it is, is you pick a driver and you can race with them. And whoever team, whatever teammates they had at the time the game came out, which was 2005, um, you get to then, when you, what you do is, I think it's, um, I forget what button it is specifically, but you press a button and it will, there's like four different options that you can do with switching the driver you can ask the driver you can ask your teammate to follow you like draft with you um you can ask them to block for you block everybody um which is that turned out to be very helpful um you can ask them to i don't remember what the third thing was but then the other thing is you can swap cars and then take control of the teammate what i did learn though is if you race the truck all of these features are not available. If you race the truck, you can't switch because he has his other teammate, the Dale Jarrett at the time, is Elliot Sadler. You can't switch. You can't. Uh, you cannot switch cars. You cannot tell the draft. You cannot do anything. It will not work um, if you race the truck. I, I learned that. But so you need to take that into consideration. But um, but it works well if like you have a big lead with one driver and you want the other driver to come up to the front um, to get skill points for passing cars or just to get up there to help block. It's really, really nice to just be able to drive, switch cars and drive them up there um, as well. It's done really, really well. Um, it's smooth. It's easy to do. It's really cool to, to do, um, especially with, like, you know, the Hender cars. There's a bunch of them to switch with. Some of them there isn't, but... Uh, so it's really up to you to to your preference there, but um, so that was. But I think it's a really cool gimmick and done really really well. It's not super elaborated on though. It's not like something super necessary to play the game. It's kind of just like an extra thing to do, for the most part. Um, so I kind of wish they would have taken a little bit more advantage of it, but I still think it was a cool concept nonetheless. Um, the driving controls are really smooth and they are really fun. Um, again, I, I really wish it was accelerate for X, X to accelerate instead of R2. Um, kind of what it became uh, after like 05. And I, it's just not as comfortable to press down on R2 as if it would have been depressed with X. But a minor complaint. So uh, the tracking car renders are, are, are pretty good. I had a few specific complaints. Um, Martinsville's turns are off like the concrete in the turns of Martinsville is like a the wrong color Which is weird. It's like a gray instead of like the normal color of the concrete Las Vegas and Charlotte are awful in this game. They are Terrible uh, Las Vegas especially is, is just is just awful the turns are too flat and it makes it almost impossible to get anything going there. Charlotte is is really, really tight. Um, let's slide around, hit the wall a bunch, you can crash. Uh, it's just too much. Dover is also lighted weird. Like, the apron of the track is, like, super, super bright. But the track itself is super, super dark for some reason. I don't know how they screw that up. But, um, but again, a minor complaint. Um, um, otherwise, but, um, 
Uh, the challenges themselves are pretty fun, though. Um, you can do, like, the lightning challenges and stuff. That all comes back um, from from past games. I wish they said when the event, like, happened. Um, because, like, for the lightning challenges, they weren't always, like, accurate. Like, if it was a day race, sometimes they were running at night for no reason. Like, it'd be set at night, and it wouldn't be the correct, like, date. And they'd be very vague on, like, the... the scenario that you're trying to recreate here um it, it's and the wrecks are never like the ones where you avoid a wreck they're almost never accurately recreated sometimes you're not even at the right track sometimes you're not in the right spot sometimes you're not the right driver um so it feels like it was just kind of like cheat like a little like cheaped out and I talked about if you get hit the wall, you get stuck there for a long time. Also, if you, um, you you flirt with the apron too much, your car will kind of like hit the apron and just like whip around, uh, really really fast and like kill at all of your momentum. That's a huge problem again. Like Charlotte, Las Vegas, Dover. That's a big issue. Um, I saw it happen at like a few other tracks as, as well. Atlanta, um, where that that's a problem. And it, it really, that that's re that really really got annoying fast um, because you know, you don't really have an indication of when it's going to happen. It, it kind of just decides to happen, uh, and I just I didn't really enjoy that a lot. But overall, this is pr this is definitely a top three NASCAR game for me all time. Um, for sure. I mean, Thunder 2004 still takes the cake, in my opinion, as number one. But I probably have to put this game at number two. Um, because it, it's really, really fun. I It's the only one of the games in the batch so far that I've like gone back and played after I did my original session of playtime for the, the notes for these reviews. I went back and played it again some more. So it's the only, t only game that I've done that for so far. Um... But that's my thoughts on it. I didn't know if you want any other thoughts. Um, if you've been watching game footage, any other comments or whatnot. But I mean, it looks like a good game. I mean, I've seen. I think I feel like I've played it before, um, but I haven't seen or haven't done all of it since I was a, basically a little kid. Um, when I played it last, so I mean, it looks like a cool game. If I was to ever have a PS2 or something like that, I would get it. Well, yeah. Anyways, for my final score for Thunder 2002, probably a six, seven out of ten. I'll give it a seven out of ten. But Thunder, but a uh, NASCAR 06 Total Team Control, probably gonna have to give a nine out of ten, um, for sure. So. That's the game reviews for this week's episode. Um, and that's really it for everything that we had, except, of course, for our... Um, except, of course, we got to preview this weekend's racing events. Again, the Truck Series is in Mid-Ohio this weekend at the road course. Um, and the Cup Series and Xfinity Series are both at Atlanta um, this weekend. So... Um, as far as mid-Ohio, I mean, we're probably going to see a pretty good race there. The trucks usually do put on a good show at some of these, like, more regional road course-style tracks. I'm looking back on, like, Canadian Tire Park or whatever it was called. Had some thrilling finishes there. Mid-Ohio should be pretty good, though, um, as well. Um, pretty unpredictable, a good unpredictability there. As far as Atlanta, though, for Trinity and the Cup, I think we're going to see some, some probably, probably a couple big ones. Um, we're probably going to see somewhat upset of a winner um and, and both and but it should some should be some pretty thrilling racing um all throughout there so um but what do we got for predictions let's start with the trucks who do we think is going to win at mid ohio this weekend i know this is probably going to be a far 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 thing for me but you know what i'm gonna go with marco andretti you're gonna pick Marco Andretti. Hmm. Who knows? But after there was after a big winner last week at Circuit or I almost just said Circuit of the Americas. Oh my God, at Chicago Street Course, 
debut win at Mid Ohio this week. Another road course debut. That's uh, yeah, especially after Chicago Street Course. That's not too far fetched of a prediction, really. Uh, for my prediction, I'm going to pick. I'll pick Corey Heim to win the race because why not? You know. Mm. And then the Xfinity Series at Atlanta. Who do we think is going to get the win here? This is far, but I'm going to go with Josh Berry. Okay, Josh Berry. I was going to go with Cole Custer, but then at the same time, I don't think he's going to win. So I'm going to go with Josh Berry. I think I'm going to go with with Sammy Smith. I think that's who I'm going to go with for, for Xfinity. And then the Cup race. You got the poker chips today? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Atlanta time. Da, 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 da. Now, technically, we have a good chance of winning with these because this is a uh, super speedway track. So who knows? We might actually get our first wins with these poker chips. Maybe. I have to get my hat. Hold on. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh, Bubba Wallace just fell. All right. Starting the drum roll. Ugh. And I can grab it. There we go. All right. Got the Red Wings cap. Got a shake her up. Right. First one. Wait, we never said who was first. You're first. Let's go with me first. Fuck it. Ty Gibbs. You know that's not bad. He's been yeah. he's been doing pretty good actually this season. We haven't really talked about him. We'll talk about him a different time, but he's not had that bad of a season to be honest. When he wins, all right. And then my and Mister Pringleton's it will be twenty-two. Oh, oh good Christ! Of course I get him. He's gonna he's gonna win now just because of that. Hey, you get your first win. Yeah, but not with Joey Logano. I don't want Joey Logano to be in. Would you rather have fucking Kevin Harvick? I no, no. We have to stick to the rules. First draw was Joey Logano. Still, I'll take it. Fine. Ooh. I know one thing we forgot. I found out today that Richard Childress. Will drive Kevin Harvick's oh, yeah, first awesome. win Atlanta uh, car for so he'll be pacing the cars right in front of the pace car for the green flag. So that will be cool for Kevin Harvick. He last race at Atlanta. He did that a few years ago with Dale Earnhardt's last win car at Talladega. Mm-hmm. He revved it up and uh, got it up with the speed a little bit. I hope he kind of does that at Atlanta as well. That'd be pretty well, crazy. see, I was watching all like the tributes, the three tributes that I've seen, and which was Richard Petty driving the Richard Petty car at da- at Darlington, and getting black flagged, um, and then Dale Earnhardt's uh, tribute, and now it'll be Kevin Harvick's tribute. So I mean, just. It's going to be cool to see it for sure. Anyway, though, that's, I think, everything that we had for this week's episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast. Um, so, got to make an announcement. I said earlier in the podcast I'm going on a 10-day vacation starting. Actually, I'll already again be on the road when this goes up. That means... No podcast episode next week, even though there is a race that we're going to have to talk about. So what's going to happen is we're going to come back the next week. I can for sure do the next week, so we're going to uh, do a double feature. Two race recaps um, back-to-back um, in the same episode. So, And then all the news will just kind of be compiled over. I already have a video moved up for next Friday, so... Uh, there will be still something for you guys to see. It just won't be a podcast episode. but um, So we'll be back at it on the 21st. 
when we recap both the Mid-Ohio Atlanta weekend and also whatever weekends other than that. Um, um, uh, that is uh, um, New Hampshire. We're going we're gonna to miss New Hampshire. Um, funny enough, I'll actually, be, I'll actually be closer to New Hampshire then than I am now, which will be... That'll be funny, but so we're gonna miss those. But oh well, uh, be nice to have a double feature. And then also in that next episode, I will do. Uh, I'll make sure to play Dirt to Daytona so that I can give a review on that. Also, could also for sure I will review NASCAR 08. That will be the uh, other game review for that next episode. And then that should be it. That actually might be it for game reviews for a little while. I have another game on the list that I want to play, but it's not mine, so I have to figure out a time to play it. But otherwise, we'll do other, like, topics and, and, and stuff like that, so uh, to play it. But anyway, if you want to be a guest on this podcast, uh, all you gotta do is join the Pringle Sun Company Discord servers. Link will be in the description. And uh, request the Talk and Ask Our Role, and either talk to me or Hitmaster, and we will get you on to... Uh, figure out a time to get you on and we'll uh, have a good time so but make sure to tag me on discord if you want to join because sometimes i don't like to talk in the pringleson and company which i really should but um you've been talking more recently yeah okay. talking it takes more. me a while before i can you know get into it right Anyway, um, that's going to do for this episode, and that's going to do for this video. So stay tuned, guys, for much more amazing content. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. So until next time, your master and I will see you guys later. Yeah, bye.